Clarissa Savoy and I am here with Classy Music Studios and we are excited that you are here tonight and you are in for a treat. Do you hear me? I promise you you're going to learn something. I'm so excited. I'm jumping out of my seat. We have Miss Fiona Chanel Williams. She is an American singer-songwriter born in and raised in Tampa, Florida. She is a creative that loves to connect with people of all ages. Fiona is married to Philip P. Michael Williams, and they have three children. Fiona is inspired musically by R&B singer Brandy, and her influence is heard in Fiona's timbre and tone. Fiona's raspy, sultry tone and honest lyrics make her an artist and friend to her listeners. Music is therapy for Fiona. She believes that anything can be expressed in a song. To date, Fiona has released one single entitled Come See About Me and is slated to release her sophomore single Sand Council towards the end of January, which is part of her debut EP Element. Fiona is a storyteller and pulls inspiration from her life experiences and those she witnessed among family and friends. Fiona is a Christian artist and makes sure that the content she releases is representative of her faith in God. In this, she hopes to inspire believers young and old to pursue their dreams, but remain grounded in their faith. Fiona loves all types of music and is drawn to any musical genre that tells a story. Fiona and her family recently relocated to Memphis, Tennessee, the birthplace of gospel music. She hopes to connect with local artists in Memphis and Nashville with a goal to write for national recording artists. As an encourager, Fiona uses the phrase, you got this, to uplift herself and others dealing with tough times. You can follow Fiona's musical journey on Instagram at Fiona Chanel Williams and on Facebook at Fiona Chanel. I'll Right. So, you guys, let's give it up for Miss Fiona. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, that amazing introduction, first of all. Uh, and thank you for this opportunity to share um, with those who are there. I can't see you, but I know you're there and you got this. <laughs> We got this. <laughs> I have to encourage uh, myself and others because um, the industry that we want to be a part of, because I'm still pursuing <laughs> to be a part of the music industry, um, is tough, but can be fun and rewarding. And you can make so many connections being a singer and songwriter. And that is what I am. Um, I love telling stories. Um, I'm one of those like music nerds that, you know, wishes that we could walk around singing. Um, but I would probably get funny looks, right? If we just walked around singing and uh, <laughs> singing everything we felt like we were in this, um, you know, this drama or production, right? But um you know, there's radio and, you know, there is live performance and there is nothing like uh, musical expression, being able to say exactly how you feel uh, as you feel it to amazing music. And um, so I am so excited and so thankful just to be a part of this masterclass. And I pray that it inspires young and old to go out there and pursue your music because music is life. That's, that's another phrase of mine. Like music is life. I could literally spend hours and hours talking about music, writing music, singing music, and just making connections with people through music. Um, you know, music is a universal language. It connects, it, it breaks barrier lines, it breaks color lines. And 
and people come together when they hear an amazing song or, you know, um, it doesn't matter where you are, if you're in the grocery store or um, in church or just out and about, when you hear that song and it's like, that's my song. And um, people just connect over it. And so I am so excited um, just to dive in and just to share who I am, uh, what my uh, creative process is, and just some takeaways that I got in my pursuit of the, uh, the music business. Sounds great. I'm just ready to dive in. I think you guys are ready. So we're gonna start with a little bit about um, displaying. I think we're gonna see a little bit of what Fiona does. For the rest of our lives, what do you say? If me and you take our love higher than the stars and the moon, take it far away. have a title for this um I don't see anybody but you know if you know about um there's an app called Boise it's for iPhone users and Boise has been my go-to for uh the past year uh when the pandemic hit um the music industry kind of shut down um because it wasn't deemed safe for uh people to uh, gather in large crowds for concerts and events and things like that. And that really like hit for creatives uh, like me. And so um, my husband told me about this app called Boise um, that he actually had on his iPad. And um, prior to moving uh, up here to Memphis, he, you know, was like, hey, you keep the iPad and you can, you know, do Boise's and stay busy. And then, you know, well, I'll get it back from you when we all get together. And um, I, I want to say from March to <laughs> June, I got on this little app and it's, it's like a mini music studio. Um, and with that app, I've made so many connections. Um, you know, you think it's just a place where people who can't really sing can get on and, you know, put something together, but I've used it as a marketing tool, believe it or not. Uh, for my songwriting. And so this particular track was actually made by a real producer, someone who makes music for a living. And so there's actually two sides to Boise. Um, there's the producer side, the people who upload the tracks, and they, are, they range between um, 45 to a minute. They're no longer than a minute long. And then you have singers like me, and so we all come together, like people who would never connect through this app. And I can make a, a clip of me singing. Um, it gives you the opportunity to build off of one track. And this particular clip, I didn't. And when I heard it, I just thought about a dreamy love song, um, about a solid relationship where I could let my hair down or let it off <laughs> and you know, just be myself, um, a love that's not pretentious. And it made me think about the moon and the stars and escaping. And um, so I just started singing that. What do you say, me and you get away for the rest of our lives? It's almost like a wedding song. Um, you know, I just imagined like, you know, like a Corvette or a car that has a sunroof, you just peel it back and you're just like, you know, why don't we get out of here? You know, why don't we escape the cares of the world? And it's just so crazy how music is both verbal and nonverbal because I can listen to a track and the story is already there and you're just adding onto it with your lyrics. But if you take time and you actually listen to something and what you feel like that first time, that is what that song is about. And I think that's what true 
storytelling is about is really like connecting with what the music is doing and what you sense and feel as you're listening to the music and then actually creating something that's authentic because more times than not there's just so much music out there that is just about stuff that is not obtainable or you know people are just making things up they're they're telling stories but it's just like i just i'm just a lover of love and love songs and so that track that particular clip spoke to me and so i'm just like yeah let's let's talk about it let's sing a love song because it sounded like a love song awesome good stuff good stuff now just wanted you all to know that this is a platform to ask questions so you can definitely get on the mic and ask questions or you can type in the chat and ask questions it is interactive sure so the Boise app, is it where um, you go to, like, do you find clips of instrumental music or you can create or someone else is creating it for you and it's just a place for you to lay the track, so to speak? What actually are you doing on the Boise app? Awesome question, Miss Angela. So. The music itself is not created on the Voise app. Um, producers make their clips and they have to submit them. Um, I believe, because my husband just actually started producing um, and placing his clips on Voise. And I think you can do about three a day. So um, you create an artist profile and you have the, either the production or you know your clips. So when you, when the producer uploads a musical clip, a singer has the opportunity to use that clip to record what's called a voicey. Um, you can do one pane like we just saw, or you can then uh, split the screen is what it's called and create a second pane where what I usually do is I harmonize with myself or I'll echo back what I'm saying um, you get four windows actually, and um, you can either uh, use all four and you can harmonize, give yourself three parts, give yourself a choir, and then lead, or um, you can connect with other creators, creatives, and um, they can harmonize with you or they can create uh, background vocals with you. And in a sense, you've created like a, a song. It's a mini song, but still a song in itself. Good question. So remember, other questions, you can hop on the mic or put them in the chat. So um, I think we're going to move to video two. And then this would be a great time to see the split as she was making reference to um, just a second ago. We can see how that's going to split now. Okay, so like I was talking about when I was uh, answering Miss Angela's question. So this is, these are the panes. So I have three windows here and I'm actually singing three parts. And um, again, I chose um, a track or a clip. And I don't know if you can see the words on my face. Like it has my handle at Fiona Chanel and then it says beat by Martin underscore K. So this producer right. has a profile where he has several different tracks, a catalog, if you will. And as a, a singer, um, 
you know, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself classically trained. Uh, I grew up singing in church and uh, we didn't really use sheet music or anything like that. Um, I did do sight singing and all that and chorus uh, in high school and a little bit of college, but I've uh, since strayed away from it. And it's like, um, it's like, you know, a second language. If you don't use it, you lose it. But thankfully, um, I do what's called singing by ear and I can hear the parts so I can hear the soprano part and I can hear the alto part and I can hear the tenor part. I won't be able to tell you what key, <laughs> but within the key of music, um, you know, when you're harmonizing, there's usually three parts. And so uh, what I do is use each pane, each window to, um, so it starts out with the one at the top and then I build on the second and then the third is usually my tenor part, whichever one I hear first. And um, I left this one open. I shared it so that someone, you know, out there in Boise land could, you know, add a little solo in the black area. But I actually created lyrics to this. So if uh, Miss Clever, so if you want to go ahead and now play the next one. Here we go. So you'll hear what I came up with, and then I'll tell you the background behind my lyrics. Here we go again, acting like we could be just friends. But we both know the truth, that deep down I'm falling for you. In the beginning, it was what cool, we never crossed the line. Then you put your lips to mine And now I'm losing it Oh, we can't go back, can we now? Now that it's gone down Back in time, you were never mine And now I've lost my good friend too Okay brief story time, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, I often uh, write about true events and, um, you know, it's, there's, there's a fine line when you're writing about true events because you have to, uh, it's just like telling any type of story. You have to know um, what to tell and how much of it to tell. Um, because you always have to um, just be mindful of your audience and be mindful of those who are involved. So the lyrics are um, drawn from an experience that I had um, pre-marriage because I am, I am married, but um, this is a song about um, feelings that I developed for a guy best friend. Um, you know, I, I expressed how I felt, but you know, those feelings weren't shared. Um, it was kind of like a, um, a platonic friendship that turned into like a gray area of, you know, are we an item or are we not? And um, so when I talk about, um, you know, in the beginning, things were with cool, we never crossed that line one time. You know, we're, we're just, you know, good friends and you know platonic friends which means we're not dating we're just cool right but right. you know when there's chemistry when um you know someone makes you laugh and you know gets you and um you know finishes your sentences and just knows you through and through you can develop um feelings for them right but if it's not uh, expressed, you know, there's kind of like that letdown, like, uh, I don't know that we can really be friends anymore because I kind of wanted it to be more, right? And hence is the title, like, never mind. And um, oh. we did stop being friends because it was just awkward after that, you know? And um, it happens. Those things happen. And um, it makes a great pop song, pop love song for, you know, whoever will see right. this on Boise or see this 
uh, class and, you know, want to purchase it. But, you know, I just, I draw from my life experiences because I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak about what I've actually gone through, which is what I really think separates um, the artist from like, you know, someone who's just kind of created and just put in a platform, but doesn't really have a true connection with um, their listeners or, you know, so yeah, but that, that was the, uh, that was my little story, you know, once upon a time, <laughs> many, many moons ago, uh, got shot down at <laughs> the end, but it made for a great song. And, um, right. you know, it's like a saying that says, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to, uh, you know, hurt a creative or, you know, break a creative's heart because you might wind up in the song. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, now you know, won't, won't say any names and, you know, won't, you know, say, you know, the time frame because, you know, you have to, you still have to protect people or you don't want to, hey, you're the person that hurt her. Like, no, I don't want, I don't want to hear that, but yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. But that, that's pretty much my creative process for that one. Awesome. I'm just sitting here enjoying it. <laughs> this is great. So um, we're gonna we're gonna take time for pause for questions and just kind of do a check and see anybody hear anything that kind of sparked some curiosity or interested in Voisey or interested in a song songwriting. Maybe you've written songs and how do you get your song out there? There's artists out there looking for songwriters. Um, and maybe we, we probably may get, get to talk about that in a little bit um, with just kind of how the, the industry works as a songwriter, if you are considering that as a field or something you're interested in. Boy meets girl. Boy meets girl. Oh, boy meets girl. I just want it to be you to play. I just want it to be your love wins up. Uh, boy meets girl. Uh, boy meets girl. Uh, boy meets girl. Uh, boy meets girl. Uh, yeah. I just want it to be your to pay yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want. You know, you can kind of get into these songs and just kind of like, okay, I want some more. And then it's, that's it. <laughs> it's over. Right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, no. It's just enough. And by the time you get into it, it's like, oh, that's right. It's just a little snippet. <laughs> I, I, I say that. And I don't know how to get in touch with the creators of Boise, but you really do want more. Like, I, I create them. And I'm like... I need more than 30 seconds to build this story. But it's, it's it's just enough, you know, everything's so, you know, honestly, everything is so microwave in our society. Um, you don't need to hear mm -hmm. 45 minutes or you don't, you don't need to hear a five minute song to determine whether someone can write or sing. You, you got like the first 15 seconds of a song to wow me, but you really do want more like i i create them and i'm like i need more than 30 seconds to build this story but it's it's, it's just enough you know everything's so you know honestly everything is so microwave in our society um you don't need to hear mm -hmm. 45 minutes or you don't you don't need to hear a five minute song to determine whether someone can write or sing you you got like the first 15 seconds of a song to wow. Right. And it's, it's like, if it's a hook, if it's gonna, yeah, if it's gonna get your attention. Yeah. So do you know of any people that have gotten um, contracts and opportunities through the Voise app as for songwriters? I've heard that they have, but I don't know them personally that I can name them, but it's just like any other social media platform, you know, um, Justin Bieber, you know, got discovered off of YouTube. 
and people get discovered right. off of Instagram. And yeah, there's definitely been, been a person or two that's gotten discovered off of Boise. And, um, you know, it's a direct connection to music executives. They're not, um, they're not just people at home who are creating music or professionals creating music. There, there are record execs on there. There are a and R's on there. There are people who actually produce for uh, professional national recording artists on there. Um, and there's a combination of people who are just, it's like karaoke. <laughs> there are people who, you know, go to karaoke for fun. And then there are people who can sing, who go to karaoke to compete. <laughs> Who don't make it who don't make it fun for the people who just want to sing you know that can't really like sing sing um so it's a combination of people who just want to have fun on the app and then there are people who know like no there's somebody watching there's somebody listening let me put my best foot forward so yeah um it happens it's happening it's just like uh the clubhouse app i don't know if you all have heard of that um they're you know they're record execs and producers and playwrights and big name people on that app and you get direct access to them audio anyway audio access and they talk to you so yeah it's these are amazing opportunities you know online and so yeah right and this is much different than how it used to be you know even just like 10 or 15 years ago so the opportunity and access is there i know hearing about the clubhouse so you had uh, any positive stories or experiences as far as the songwriting aspect from there? Um, you know, I connected. It's so funny because I moved up here and then started connecting with people back home. Um, Instagram is uh, one of the main platforms that I use. And so I record my voices. And they're actually uh, conjoined. So I can create a Boise and then actually share it directly to Instagram. And then I can, you know, sometimes you can boost a post on Instagram. It basically means you're, you're paying for your content to be seen further than just your 200 or 400 followers or however you may have. And um, so I have connected with some people back home that I never met and, you know, was able to provide you know, a producer sent me some tracks and was like, hey, can you write something to this? And, you know, I use my my iPad and GarageBand, which is another good app um, for Apple users. Um, I use GarageBand. I loaded his track in my iPad and just sing some lyrics. And so, you know, he has an artist that I'm, I'm waiting back to hear if, you know, they want to use my lyrics. So, um, awesome. I count the small wins. A lot of people, what I will encourage those who are watching is um, you have to count the small wins. Um, you may not be like a nationally known producer or recording artist, but it's an opportunity to get your voice heard. You don't want to be, you know, sky high and just so, you know, conceited or, you know, you, you have to be able to work with everybody. Um, and you have to be able to start at the bottom, you know. Drake has a song started at the bottom, now we're here. And what I've what I've seen and especially in younger people is that they don't want to start at the bottom. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you have to. Like you can't, you know, just roll out of bed and go, I want to be a rapper or I want to be a singer and I only want to work with the top of the top. And it's like, well, they don't know who you are. So you have to start at the bottom with everybody else and work your way, you know, connecting and um, using Boise. Um, I use Boise as a digital repertoire. I say that I'm a songwriter and I want to write for professional people. People need to be able to see my skill and hear my skill. And what better way than to 30 second clip of me actually singing original lyrics and it's right there on Instagram there mm -hmm. you can decide to reach out to me to either have me sing it or to have an artist sing it or you can buy it from me or we can become you know co-authors I can be a, a writer for hire where you pay me a certain amount and then it belongs to you or I'm given a, a royalty um, a percentage of a royalty where as the song is played on the radio or in movies or in commercials I get a cut. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it leads to amazing opportunities. 
Um, so are you pursuing, yeah, are you pursuing, do you find yourself more singer, performer, or do you see yourself more as the songwriter? So I have a love for all three, um, but I love the process of writing. And for me, I, I like songwriting and I enjoy songwriting because it gives me the liberty to still do what I need to do at home. Because when you're the main artist, um, when you're the main person that's on stage, you know, you have to tour and you have to be in the forefront. And, um, you know, there are pros and cons to being, you know, an artist. As a songwriter, I have more liberties. I can sit in on a songwriting session, uh, which are done by Zooms now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do the lead sheet where we divide up the royalties or who gets credit for what. And, you know, electronically, I can copyright the song. I can register the song with, you know, either BMI or ASCAP, which are, um, you know, agencies that kind of keep track of how many songs you've written and make sure you get those royalties. And I can do that from the comfort of my home. Um, as much as I want to pursue this and I am pursuing this, um, balance is um, necessary. Like I, I, at, um, as a wife and mom, you know, there's always that tug. There's always that tug where you have to decide where, you know, am I going to fully go and be the artist? Which people are doing it. You know, Beyonce's doing it. Everybody's doing it. You know, she has a big team to me. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so as a songwriter, I can I can do that in the comfort of my home and take care of the things that need to be done at home. So, um, true. But true. I, you know, I love um, I love worship, and um, I miss being on the stage um, as a worship leader and a praise team member, um, which is different from a performance because it's worship is not a performance. Um, so I love every aspect of being an artist. Um, but if I had to choose, you know, being a songwriter is what's near and dear to me. Okay. And you said you were going to, uh, you, you mentioned about the creative process. I don't know if we want to go through to the next video, our last video, before we kind of talk about and just have maybe someone to join in on how this creative process flows from beginning to end. You want to go to vid the video next, or are we going to? We can go to the next video. Okay, awesome. See you clap your hands. Let me see you do your dance. Let me hear you lift your voice. Let me hear you make some noise. Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see you do your dance. Let me hear you lift your voice. Let me hear you make some noise. Let me see you clap your hands. Let me see. That's another one. I'm yeah. like, it's over. it's over already. <laughs> I know. Yes, I, want, I, I just want to clear that. I, <laughs> I, um, I was listening back to it and I was like, man, I should have sent her a couple where people actually joined me because, um, yeah, you know, I just heard this track and I don't know if the producer is a gospel producer, but as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, this is a church bump. We're going to bump and we're going to have a good time. And um, yes. <laughs> so in my post on Boise, I invited people to join me. I was like, yeah, let's have church. And so I actually created that hashtag um, church on Boise because, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, a faith-based app. It's just a music app. And so there's all types of musical tracks on there and people are singing about everything on there. So, you know, when I heard this, I was like, oh, this sounds like, this sounds like church. And I just, yeah. you know, wanted to create something uplifting 
And I encouraged people. I was, I tagged some people because you can tag people on Boise and you can go, you know, I said, Hey, take the lead. Somebody take the lead. Somebody join me because it's, it's a feel good song. It's a feel good song. And I wish I had like sent you. <laughs> yes. I wish I had sent I, I, you. I said, I'm, I'm ready to dance and clap my hands. Because there was yes. a guy who, um, his name's Tyrese. And he, okay. um, he killed it. He killed it. And um, I'm gonna check it out. I definitely still want to check it out. I sent it to you, so I don't. I don't want to put you okay, on perfect. Have you like loaded here? But I sent it oh, to you, no and um, he like he knocked it out the water. Okay. So I got it. We can pull it right up, and then we're gonna we're gonna go next to uh, after this video. We're gonna go to joining on a live creative process and this is where okay. everybody gets to participate so do you want to have them to start thinking about something in particular to chime in on i don't know if it's a color or a word you were talking about when everybody start thinking yes. about it so yes and you know those who are viewing if um you can help me out this is the, this is the part of the you know, class where you get to participate. I almost said service. This is part of service. <laughs> I'm so churchy. <laughs> this is part of the service where everybody can participate. <laughs> so I want you all to think of a subject matter, um, a place, um, a feeling, um, you know, a color and a genre. And, you know, I know that we're all, most of us are all musical people but a genre is just a type of music form. So pop, rock, country, gospel, um, keep it towards the singing type of, cause I, I can't rap, <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> Put it in the chat for me and I'm just gonna pick some and I'll just, um, you'll see. Cause I, what, I, what I usually do is, um, it's, a, it's sort of like freestyling towards what toward like a rapper does, but I sing, like I hear things and I, you know, I see the picture in my mind and I come up with the song. So it'll be really fun. So if you guys can help me out, put some colors, put some verbs, put some expressions or emotions, uh, put a place, you know, and let's just see what happens. Yes. Oh, Don't so you, be oh, you shy. Oh, he killed. Don't be like, shy. Y'all are here, but he killed my, my background vocals. He, he killed this lead. Yes, yes, yes. And then it, oh my god. And then it's over. <laughs> and then it's I know. over. That's it. <laughs> it's really Good a stuff. tease. It's a it's like a gift and a curse because you connect with people, you make these amazing tracks. But um the the reality is like it doesn't belong to you. Now, some of the producers put their information out there, like they have their email addresses, and you can reach out and you can go, hey, you know. How much does it cost to actually lease this beat or purchase this uh, beat outright so that I can own it and actually create to it? So, I mean, the opportunity is there, but, you know, most people on there are either, like I said, there for the entertainment or they're there, you know, trying to get discovered. And, um, but you, you, you can connect with people. Like I have my email and Instagram on my, uh, my page and people reach out to me and they follow me and we connect. But yeah, I mean, but, but look what happened. It's just like, we like two strangers, like he didn't know me and I didn't know him. And, you know, I tagged him cause I, I found his page and I heard, you know, he was, he's really good. And I was like, Hey, you know, jump on. And that's what he did. I was like, Oh my gosh. Like we created a little song together and that would have never yeah. happened had we not been on that app. So right. it, it's amazing. 
Okay, so now we're going to get to the part where we get to see this creative process from beginning of an idea and a concept to an actual song. So I don't see much in the chat. I'm going to put one in the chat and okay. it's just the color yellow and the color yellow reminds me of happiness. It reminds me of um, joy. You think of yellow. So I can start off with yellow. Anybody else want to add? You can jump on the mic or you can put it in the chat. Hearts. So we got another word, hearts. Reggae, all right, island. Okay. You're on mute, Fiona. I was laughing to myself. I was like, okay, that's a challenge for me. But I said six <laughs> songs that you can <laughs> Yes. Reggae island beats. Okay, let's get one more thing to add to this and then I'll go ahead and uh, I'll see what I can come up with. I have never sang reggae. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is going to be really fun then. So you said maybe a place where we will have want to visit or, okay, we got something else. Cool, cool and calm. And calm. Blues, mellow. All right, y'all. If you guys are not excited, I'm, I I don't know, but you should be excited to see how this oh. is going to. Sophia, okay. what is it you're about to do? Are you about to take these words and kind of create lyrics and then you're going to choose a clip? What's the process? Or do you listen to a clip first and then figure out your lyrics? So if I, so we try to get that to work with Boise, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to do an acapella. So I'm not going to, I don't have any music, but I am going to take these concepts and just try to create some lyrics. And this is kind of what I do. Um, you know, what do I want to sing about? What do I want the style to be, which our style <laughs> looks like it's going to be reggae. <laughs> and, um, you know, some of the words I'll use are joy, you know, well, she said yellow reminded her of joy and happiness. And then someone put in heart. And then someone else put cool, calm, blues, and mellow, which, you know, mellow and yellow kind of rhyme, you know. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't become too cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is fun. I can't wait to see with how you do this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I have never sung reggae. So for those of you who are, who are true uh, <laughs> reggae fans, I apologize. <laughs> If it doesn't sound true to what you listen to. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you make me happy. You bring me joy. I see yellow, yellow, it makes me mellow, mellow. Oh, you make me happy, make me happy. You give me joy. Yellow, yellow, mellow. In my heart, I feel joy. When I think about your love, a cool, cool breeze, oh, comes over me, oh, 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 oh. let's take a trip to Jamaica, yeah, let's take a trip around the world and celebrate our love, love, oh. Yellow love, oh, in my heart, yeah, oh, yellow, oh, yellow, cool and calm, yellow. 
Yes, yes. Y'all give it up. Put those emojis in the chat. Yes. Now, was it that not fun just to throw some concepts out and see the creative process in its raw form? No music, no drum beat, literally complete raw form. So no auto tune. So forgive us the squeaks and the cracks. <laughs> So you just kind of had to feel that little island thing she had going on and how she put yeah. that together. I mean, and that was just a matter of a few seconds. We threw some words and some turns out. So some of you guys out there, <clears throat> whether you're on now or you just have a cre you just have a creative mind, now you realize that that gift of creativeness really could flow into songwriting. Or if you realize, oh, okay, this is, I've been doing this. This is what I've been doing. And make it kind of solidify your understanding of, hey, maybe I can, you know, work on this, this concept and idea of being a songwriter and embrace it and just kind of grow with it. But Yana, that was awesome. I love that activity. I was, I, activity, I was waiting to see how that was going to all come together. And I, I could feel the you 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 worked the reggae beat out. You worked it out. I, was I can so feel nervous. it. I was like, oh God, I've never seen reggae in my life. <laughs> yes, yes. So once again, you guys, if you have questions, you can get on the mic and ask a question, or you can type it in the chat. Um, that's the ideas that you are having an opportunity to learn. Um, but we've got some great information. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, I think Fiona, she may have a few more kind of parting closing ideas and things you want to share we just it's just so much to talk about we might have to do a part two yeah definitely so um so one thing I did want to share with um our future singer songwriters and musicians and artists is uh just staying true to who you are as a person because uh the industry is a business and it's a tough one and you can get pulled in so many different directions. And, um, you know, you just have to know who you are as a person um, before you can identify yourself as an artist. Like artist is kind of like a subsection of your identity. Um, and when I say identity, it's like who you are on a daily basis, like the real you, like the you, that's not on stage, the you that's not in front of a camera, the you that's not holding a microphone. Um, what are you passionate about? Um, what's your cause? What do you believe in? And you know, you may feel like you're too young to have a, a cause or anything like that, but just knowing what you're rooted in, what your faith is, um, what moves you? Because you're gonna get in front of people who are gonna tell you how to dress and what to sing and where to go and who to hang out with. And you can kind of get lost in all of that. And um, so if I could part and leave you all with any type of parting words, it's just to know, figure out who you are first, figure out, you know, what type of artist you're gonna be. Are you gonna be um, an artist that's an advocate, you know, someone whose lyrics talk about social injustices? Um, are you gonna be a, a crooner and sing about love? Um, are you going to be a hip hop artist and, you know, just bring awareness to things going in your community? Um, are you going to be a pop singer? You know, are you going to sing about going out and having fun? Whatever you decide, just have a foundation, have a firm foundation first, because when you get, when you reach that goal of getting in front of those execs and the people who can actually make moves for you, you just don't want to get lost. And it's very easy. See a question. Have you ever written a song for any popular artist? No, no, not yet. But that not is yet. my goal. That is my goal. Uh, that is my dream. And that is my prayer that one day someone will hear me and hear my work and decide to give me that opportunity. Um, and I'm very, very hopeful. Um, I'm not too far from Nashville. Um, you know, well, it's three hours, but three hours compared to 13, that's <laughs> not bad because that's how far as Tampa is from Memphis. But um, just know who you are as a person first. So when you get in front of someone who has the money and makes the decisions, you can you know, tell them like, 
I want to be fully dressed and I don't want to sing about X, Y, and Z. And I don't want to make it rain. And I don't want um, to use profanity. Um, I, I, I have a foundation already as a person. I have an identity as a person. And so I don't, I don't want to be molded into something that, that I'm not. And so if I could leave you all with anything, it's just to know who you are as a person before you identify as an artist and, and do your research. Um, look things up. <laughs> Google. <laughs> mm-hmm. I look up a lot. Before I, I, before I respond, um, before I put myself out there, I look it up um, and read. You have to know, you know, what you're signing. You know, you get contracts, and if you don't read the fine lines, you could be stuck in something that becomes, you know, something you don't want to do anymore. And um, it happens all the time. You know, get your education. You know, no yeah. matter how far you want to go in the music industry, you need a foundation in education. Um, you need math. You need to know how to count your money. <laughs> You need to know your percentages. If someone says you're getting a certain percent of the ticket sales or the door sales, you need to you need to know how to calculate that so you're not being robbed. Um, writing and you know history, things like that. Just knowing um, the history of the music business and just knowing you know what it is you yeah. represent and just knowing the bigger picture. So yeah, I could yeah. go on and on with my final thoughts, but. <laughs> yes, Fiona, and I'm glad you kind of closed out on that because our audience is, we are open and Inspire is here to inspire anybody, but our focus is students. And sometimes our students are caught up in, you know, their their dreams in which this is what we're here for to inspire you to pursue your dreams, but also have a balance. And as an educator myself, you know, definitely a proponent of understanding the value of education. So I'm so glad you brought that in and pull that into what you're presenting today. Well, Fiona, you were phenomenal. I just totally enjoyed everything that you shared and what you brought to us today. We are going to go ahead and close and end our Inspire Music Masterclass today. And as we end every session, we end by saying thank you We are here to inspire you to explore the world of music. Thank you and good night.